Alrighty, Zaya here bringing you a game that is not my own. Once again, the reason for this is I am planning on casting some Sunday tournaments, so I need to learn how to cast games that are not me. We have a ZVZ in the top right, the blue player, OG Tenza. In the bottom left, the red player, LL, capital I, capital I, capital I, LL, delimiter, delimiter, pipe, pipe, capital I, L. So, these are pretty high level players. It looked like one was Grandmaster and one was Master, playing against a Grandmaster, so his ELO, MMR, whatever you want to call it, has to be pretty high. We are on Whirlwind LE, four player map, so you do not know where your opponent is spawning, and since they are cross position, as you see, neither Overlord is going to scout his opponent right away. Let's throw up the, uh, you know, nah, let's throw up the production tab. We see that Mr. Barcode, because saying his name is way too hard decided to go for an extractor trick, whereas Mr. Tenza decided to go for standard, uh, nine overlord, into some drones. IC pros do it both ways, so I really don't think there's much of a difference. If one way was clearly better than the other, everyone would do it that way. But that's not how it seems to work out. So, ZVZ. We don't see any crazy 10 pull shenanigans. It's pretty tough to do on Whirlwind because one, four player map, and two, fairly big map. It can be cool doing like a 10 pull or something because if you do find your opponent, they will not know it is coming and 15 hatch is extremely popular on this map as we see here and here and 10 pull kind of crushes that. But now instead we see pretty standard play, 15 pulls across the board. So uh, yeah, we won't be seeing much of a variance for a little while unless one guy decides to go gas and one guy decides to not. And well, right on cue, they both decided to go gas. So we're looking to see a standard ZVZ until these hatchers are built. So I need to try and stall for like 75 seconds, and I am not sure how I'm going to do that. No. What will happen is either one guy will decide to do an all-in with Lings and Banelings, or they'll both play kind of defensively, building kind of a wall with Evo Chambers and maybe a couple Banelings if they need until the hatcheries and stuff come down. I have no clue what's going to happen because I have never seen either of these players play. Overlords hanging out, hanging out. We haven't even seen any Overlords run into each other yet. Mr. A and B Overlord and C and D Overlord will kind of hit each other at the same time and that will tell them their cross position. But uh, yeah, I think they've already kind of... No, I guess they haven't figured that out yet. Red might think that blue is on the top left, and blue might think red is in the bottom right. Until this happens. Alright, so we still see a mirror match coming. Two queens, speed, 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 queen, 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 drone, 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 drone. We do see Mr. Blue. I'll try to remember his name. We do see Tenza getting two lings, whereas Barcode is opting to go pure drones. Lings will give you a little bit of scouting, not really map control, because there's nothing to control for now in the ZVZ. But uh, yeah, they do give you a little bit earlier scouting, and we do see Barco taking an earlier baneling nest. Whether that's going to be offensive or defensive, we do not know yet. Tends to send these two lings across the map. That is about all we have to watch right now. Look at the units tab. And Barcode is up a couple drones, one drone now. That's just because he didn't get the lings. He's getting his lings now, a little bit later. Bane the nest coming, so we see an absolute mirror match now. Only difference being earlier lings versus earlier Bane nest. Tenza will lose one ling, but the other ling will get in here and get a full scout. He'll see the Bane the nest. He'll see ling speed coming. He'll see three guys are still on gas, and that's a lot of gas. That's 300 gas, only 100 for speed, 15 for 50 for the Bane ling nest. So, Barcode has the potential to make a lot of Banelings, and here we go, Barcode making 26 Zerglings. A lot of those are going to be Banelings with his 174 gas. Let's see what Tenza does to stop this. He's getting a Spine Crawler. No real wall though, I mean, wide open space here for Lings to run by. A couple Lings on the ramp won't do much. Barcode's Overlord is going to be fine here. He doesn't want to throw away these lings. Nope, okay. Just early bane lings. So Tenza is going to have to work his ass off to defend this. He's getting a couple of bane lings of his own on top of the ramp. And two more below the ramp. But this is a lot of zerglings with good control by Barco. This could be serious trouble for Tenza. One spine crawler going to help though. And it does focus the bane lings. So that's... Uh, oh, blow him up! Decent... 
Uh, nice spawning position now, and new Ling's coming in. Tenza defended this with pretty much zero losses. I'm kind of surprised because Baneling hits weren't that amazing. But uh, no, excellent spawning pool placement. Oh shoot, Barco coming to the mass Baneling's just going for pure drones. And trying to hit the spine crow, it doesn't really finish it off, which is not a good thing. I hope you guys can't hear all those Skype messages. Lings are coming to finish the spine crawl off. They don't get it either, though. So good for Tenza. Four more lings wasted, and that spine crawler is going to get a, gonna get a couple more shots off before it goes down. We got more bane lings coming from barcode. Let's look at the units tab real quick. Workers are about even. Ah, uh, the banes do not manage to save the first spine crawler, and here come a ton of lings. Ooh, two bane lings from Tenza hitting the one bane ling from uh, barcode. Not what you want to do, and a queen going down. But, yeah, barcode up a little bit on food. Crazy game. Uh, get back, Tenza. Trying to snipe these banelings, but the barcode things pick them off. Wow. We just have a ton of shit going on. Just watch the game for a second. There you go. Stuff blew up. Lings died. Workers died. Let's go back to the unit step, see where we're going. We're still dead even on workers. So we see two absolutely different strategies, and we're pretty much dead even. Very good play by Tenza there. Your spine crawler can go ahead and take some damage. Keep your bane links things alive. Oh. Nice detonation by Tenza. Any advantage that Barcode had may have. Nah, Barcode sells a lot of stuff, actually. Tenza's gonna need some excellent. Uh, okay. Good hit by Tenza. Only losing one link to that bane link. And now they're about even on links, so neither player is gonna. Hurt. Mainly Barcode is not going to be able to do serious damage to Tenza. Which is what he wants. He's in full defense mode right now. We have a ton of Lings streaming across the map again. Three Banelings, so it's going to come down to Baneling hits once more. Five Banelings coming from Barcode. Barcode is up 13 food, so he should have an advantage in this game. Despite the worker count being fairly even, just more non-workers on the map for uh, Barcode. Oh man. A lot of people don't like Ling Bane Wars, but I think they're a lot of fun. A lot of weakened Bane Lings. Can the spine hit them? Nice transfuse on the spine. And yes, the spine definitely uh, took out all the Bane Lings with that one Bane Ling hit. And the Queen even survives with two life! More stuff coming from Barco though. Ah, tons of losing that Bane Ling to one worker. Second one... Trying to get itself killed, but it doesn't manage to because of a surround. Tenza's looking to stabilize a little bit here, but we see a ton of stuff rallying across the map again from Barcode. Is he gonna go for a straight for the spine? Yes, he does. Kills the spine. We have Mutas from Tenza. Oh my gosh, I am the worst caster ever. I did not even notice the Spire coming. That is excellent defense by Tenza while getting the Spire, but Mutas don't have the best DPS. So if uh, Barcode can get a ton of stuff in this base, he can still do some significant damage. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Muta's pretty good against Banelings because Banelings are a lot slower. We see Tenza's kind of given up on this uh, hatchery for the time being in terms of mining. And the Muta's hopefully focus these Banes. Yeah, it didn't really happen. One Queen goes down, two Queens down, so Tenza not going to be able to inject at all. Does he have any Queens coming? No, he does not. He just has a couple more Muta's coming, a couple drones coming. Looks like he can't even afford queens, though, so for now they're not going to hurt him. Food or supply is still dead even. Worker count, been the same for quite a while. We do see one worker go down. Was that a uh, spine? No, it was another gas. I'm not sure about getting that gas right now. I think workers and maybe a couple spines to stay alive would be good. Uh, so yes, crazy game. Barcode still going to be trying to end this game. You see, it hasn't taken just now taking his second extractor and these mutas might start getting map control they can pick off a couple over overlords that'll force barcode to uh, waste some larvae and minerals training new ones oh nope they cut down first do they see this baneling they do see the baneling so no more banelings for barcode it looks like tenza managed to hold off long enough to take the advantage in this game he should be droning up hard um Oh, a couple drones coming. Not exactly hard. But yeah, I'd like to see pure drones by Tenza and completely clearing the map. He's got a he's got plenty here to defend. Any Ling Bling. Ling Bling? Sure. Ling Bling all in. 
So as mutas can go ahead and uh, poke at the base, kill overlords. I don't like chasing lings here. I'd be clearing the watchtower and then going straight for the base. If you find overlords, kill them. If not, just force spores everywhere. Yeah, I didn't see those overlords. Can spread these guys out a little bit too, but that's fine. And here's here's what we're gonna see. This is where the mutas are gonna shine. Overlord there, we have a supply block. Stay away from spores, good. Head back out on the map. He doesn't really know where these, uh, oh, we have an open gas here. Yes. And because, eh, I don't know. I'd like to see that gas going down, sorry for the massive scrolling. Tenza, eh, I have map hacks, so. You know, Tenzo doesn't know what he should be doing like I do. Infestation pick coming down from barcode. Trying to get... He can't catch up in Muta count. So he's trying to get something that will help him catch up against Mutas. And infestation pit is the way to go. We have a massive Muta count here. This gas should go down now. Do it, Tenza. Please. Nope, still not happening. Instead, we see a massive ling run by. You got spore crawlers, I'm gonna send lings at you. And barcode just leaves. So yeah, Tenza got enough mutas that the barcode felt the need to throw up spores, and so Tenza just sent some lings. But the real reason Tenza won this game was his defense. Nice baneling wall, took 700 some damage, and that's after healing, hatchery almost died. We know he threw down a few spines that did excellent work. So yeah, Tenza got kind of cut off guard, but he did an excellent job with his SimCity and his uh, micro. And then this SimCity up here did very well too. The barcode player could never try and sneak workers up in here to get a surround on the workers. Worker, no, couldn't sneak lings up in there to get a surround on the workers. And Tenza snuck a spire in there that even I didn't know was coming that ended up winning him the game. So yes, I'm gonna end this now.